Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Tammy Patzer, and this is a really exciting episode of Expert Profiles today because we have international jazz singer Donna Singer here with us today, and we're going to have a really fun conversation. But first, let me get started with the introduction. And you may know that Donna is a powerhouse performer, a jazz vocalist, and she's taken the world by storm with her incredible talent. From her stunning live performances at renowned festivals and concert halls to her captivating recordings, Donna Singer has left jazz lovers in awe around the globe. She was born in the Bronx and raised in upstate New York, and Donna was immersed in the world of jazz from a very young age. She was surrounded by her family of jazz enthusiasts. She grew up listening to the likes of Nancy Wilson, Billy Strayhorn, Sammy Davis Jr., and Count Basie. This love for the music propelled her to become the incredible jazz vocalist she is today captivating audiences in North America, South America, Europe, Australia, and Africa. But Donna's talents don't stop at singing. She's also a passionate educator, sharing her gift with aspiring musicians through her own school of song. Donna's dedication to music has earned her a place in the National Guild of Piano Teachers and she continues to mentor and train young and adult students in piano and voice. That's interesting, Donna. I don't remember Mm -hmm. you telling me about that before. Oh, really? I'm happy to know that. (laughs) 12 chart-topping recordings and international airplay, Donna Singer's voice has become a staple on radio stations worldwide. And let's not forget her recent venture into creating her own record label, Emerald Baby Recording Company, LLC, which has led to even greater success. Today, we'll be diving more into Donna's musical journey, discussing her inspirations for her original songs and reflecting on the performances that have left the biggest impact on her. We'll also explore the unique and enjoyable stages that have shaped her career and delve into the secrets behind Mm -hmm. your high ranking on the Roots Music Report. And if that's not enough, we're going to give an exclusive glimpse into Donna's 2023 tour where she performed into some of the most breathtaking locations Mm -hmm. in the world. And we're going to find out about what aspirations and milestones she's striving for in 2024. So let's give Donna Singer a warm (laughs) welcome. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Good evening. I'm so happy to be here, Dr. Tammy. Wow. Like I said, I did not remember that you're also a piano teacher. And whenever I think about music, I was one of those people who I really wanted to do music, but it was not in the cards. It, you know, mm-hmm. my family was, oh, we can't afford it. You know, we we had those little mm-hmm. lutabones. <laughs> and <laughs> when it came time when I wanted, oh, I want to play an instrument. Oh, we can't afford it. That became the, the issue. So mm-hmm. I never got to do that. And then, of course, my singing voice, let's just say, I was told to be quiet um, often (laughs) when I tried to sing. So I just never had that part of my talent get an opportunity to develop. So I'm going to ask you a question. So tell me, Donna, where do you draw your inspiration for all of your original songs? Um, that's a that's a great question. My inspiration comes to me through my husband, Roy Singer, who is a composer of all my original songs. I am not a writer. 
I am not a composer. My husband writes the music and his partner, Mitchell Usher, do write the words. And they are award-winning team. They have done very well in their career. And they actually allow me to sing their songs, not the other way around. Um, the songs, the inspiration, um, usually I just, the inspiration comes to me is um, maybe I'll say, good, like we're doing a Christmas album right now. So obviously they're writing Christmas songs, but I'll say, I want a specific song about snow. And then next thing I know, one day later, I'll have a song about snow and boom, it's on the album. Wow. That's really interesting. So you get to be the brains of the outfit <laughs> <laughs> or, or you get inspired and then you have people who can make your yeah, audio make vision come yeah. to life. That is just amazing. So Throughout your career, you've sung in so many different venues mm -hmm. around the world. Which performances have left you with some really meaningful impact? Um, we we performed in Paris, and I, I'm going to say that was meaningful, kind of twofold. It was it was very meaningful just to be in that city, to perform in Paris was just wonderful. It was in a very small setting. It was a small intimate gathering and it was a great concert. And then afterwards, Roy, my husband and I went to the Eiffel Tower and we renewed our wedding vows. So, so we could say, what was the most impact? Yes, the concert was great. It was a wonderful impact. But having experiences even outside of the concert stage where we renewed our vows and it was and I had a veil and we did the whole nine yards. He was in a little suit and we just renewed our vows in Paris. Another another stage that that I actually started to cry before going on stage was at Carnegie Hall the the um orchestra was playing and um we and me and the other singers we had not entered the stage yet and it was so meaningful that i was about ready to step on this stage and you have to you have to give respect and credit where it's due to all the performers before me i i a tear came to my eye and I was like, stop, you won't be able to sing. You won't be able to sing. But I was like, I was that emotional. And Roy came to the rehearsals for Carnegie Hall. And we knew it was going to be a great concert. But it ended up just being more than I could ever imagine. And afterwards for the cast party, it was like, it was like just that extension. I really love what I do. And I'm really blessed to be able to do the songs that I do at different locations in the world. So those two, I would say, that were meaningful and had an impact on me. So thinking about that, are there any other performances or stages or venues that were really unique and enjoyable for you? Besides yeah. Those? yeah, I guess one more place. Well, I have to say New York. I love, I love performing in New York. My last tour was a lot of fun. We performed for the Center of, for Discovery, which is um, um, disabled um, children, patients, and so forth. And to, to perform a concert in front of these, these young adults, adults and children who are in wheelchairs or who can't talk, and just come to life under that jazz music, it was phenomenal. I, I left so inspired. I, I left like, that was great. They, they would come up on stage and dance with me. And I'd have no problem with that. I'm mean, no problem with that at all. Um, there were people always, the security was, was very, very good. But they were able to roam and do whatever they wanted to do at the Center for Discovery. And, and Roy was actually playing the piano. And Kevin was playing the drums. And one started to kind of inch closer and closer just to watch their hands play the piano. You know, the, the students would just watch Roy playing the piano or watch Kevin hitting those drums. It was very awe-inspiring. I just, I loved it. And we actually filmed a commercial of that concert for the Center for Discovery. So it really, it was, I was honored to be a part of that. Wow, that that is so amazing because yeah. you're, you're doing so many different things at so many levels. Tell me more about the Roots Music Report and how did you achieve such a high ranking with that 
And what is it related to? Demographics, sales, or something else? Yeah, yeah. That's I love the Roots Music um, Jazz Report is is like um, for to just help you understand a little better. Think of the Billboard charts. The Billboard charts. Your song comes out. You go to number one on the Billboard charts, and they're focused on money. How many albums did you sell? That's how you get on the Billboard charts. Well, with Roots Music, it's an independent station of just independent artists. So let's put it this way. We're not going to see Sarah Vaughn and Ella Fitzgerald on the Roots Music charts because they're independent artists. Those are artists who were signed to a record label at that time. I have my own record label, which makes me an independent artist with a record label. So then Roots would take my song. Just to give you an example, um, I asked Roy and Mitch that I wanted to do a um, gospel song. I kept hearing one of the jazz songs they wrote for my last album as a gospel song. It just it just kept every time I sang the song, I felt like I wanted to rip out and be Mahalia Jackson. So I said to them, could we please turn this song into a gospel song instead of saying we can make a stand let's say take god's hand because it was make a stand for all that you achieve in life all that you want to do make a stand for what you believe in but i heard take god's hand we can make a stand together we can achieve so i asked them would would we so they tweaked the words you're right i have my own writing team they tweaked the words and did exactly that Roots Music Report caught a hold the the Christian the Christian um contemporary Christian report got a hold of it and it was number one for nine weeks on the chart. It wasn't up against. I, I keep mentioning people who are dead. Michael Jackson, Prince. I don't keep I don't keep meaning to mention that Beyonce. There, there you go. It wasn't up against them, but the independent music world, and that's what makes it so special because we have our voice. Roots Music Charts gives us a voice. We're not going to sell a million albums and get on Billboard Top 10 or Casey Kasem's, you know, Top 100. I'm not going to sell that. But on on the music chart, on the radio, my song was played and I was number one. So they give us a voice for independent artists. Okay. Wow, that's fantastic. I I didn't know. Most of our listeners Mm -hmm. probably don't even have a concept of all of the levels right. of, of music and because obviously like you said there's a handful of very very famous people out there in the mainstream world right. world and, and there, but yet there's so many other people out there right. who are successful like they are. you and, and who are at the top of their game, they're just in a different, like a little different world or section. That's it. They're that's over the here. World. I'm over there. And that's OK. Our worlds do come together because with Roots, the songs have to be on NPR, college radio stations, NPR radio stations. And you hope to be crossed over to the FM dial. You never know. <laughs> and Roots allows that to happen. Wow, that's interesting because as I've gotten older, I've come mm-hmm. to appreciate the NPR stations yes. a lot more because of the fact they have some really interesting storytelling, right. different things that you just can't get in other places. Right. So 2023 has been a really big touring year yeah. for you. Um, can you tell me more about it? What, what have you been doing? Well, It started out in Kansas for Roy's high school reunion. We decided to go to Kansas and I called the all-star Kansas um, big band and asked them, could we do something at the Bolas Performing Arts Center? They said yes. Bolas said yes. And we ended up having almost a sold out show for the, um, for the, uh, for with the 18 piece big band orchestra. Then we went to London and I have to tell you, I would almost put this where you asked me, Donna, what's one of your special performances? We performed, I did the jazz portion on the steps in front at the fountain in front of Buckingham Palace. And here, and once again, I, I almost cried because it was just, it's just such a powerful location. 
You know, it's just like, wow, am I really singing here right now? Some people think venues and inside venues are what's so important. And 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 I've sung on some steps of some beautiful places. I, I think it's just it's just all really great. Then we went to New York where I did the Center for Discovery. I also did a few um, jazz shows with my quartet. And um, and now I have to admit, I'm very excited, Tammy. Next week or two weeks from now, we're going into the studio for my ninth album, a Christmas album with my trio. So that's a nice way to end the holiday, the summer session. Wow. So I do have a question related. Yeah. Back in the day, I used to get my vinyl <laughs> albums. How mm-hmm. many songs now are on an album when you okay. create an album? Okay. Now, because I have a record label, which is Emerald Baby Recording Company, I am part of the Recording Academy, which are the people who give out the Grammys. I'll give you their criteria. Their criteria is you must have at least uh, 12, 12 to 15 minutes minimum on an album. So, so if you put one song on an album, unless they specifically say one song, but for jazz, it's the entire album. So my particular albums tend to be eight to 10 songs. Um, I've seen Wynton Marcellus come up with quite uh, like, like, 15 songs on one album. You know what I mean? Or or he'll have maybe just five songs on an album and it and all everybody's solo is very long. So with your vinyl, I don't know back in the day what it used to be with vinyl. Ha ha ha. Like I don't know what that means. Um, but for CDs, I know for me, it has to be be more than 12 to 15 minutes in order for it to be considered into Grammy contention. So the album that I'm putting in this year is Dance Band Boogie. That's my big band album. And that that is about 30 minutes long. So the songs are kind of short. The, the solos are kind of short. But I put that in for best big ensemble, large ensemble recording. Wish me wow. Up. Yeah. That's exciting. It is exciting. Learn something, <laughs> learn something new. Uh, so here we are. We're going into the fourth quarter of 2023. So what what are you looking forward to in for 2024? Well, about a year ago or two years ago, I started the Joyful Journey Music Festival. And that's a festival where we bring different genres together and just share an evening of music. It's with the Diamond Jazz Orchestra, my orchestra, and me. And then I usually bring in two to three or four other performers. So we're looking forward to doing something this spring with the Diamond Jazz Orchestra. Also, I have been asked to go to Rome and I will be singing in Vatican Square um, City, Vatican City. So, yeah, I'm very excited about it. So what am I looking forward to? So far, I've got two gigs. <laughs> I've, got, I've got the Joyful Journey Music Festival and I've got Vatican City. Um, if anybody wants to put me in there anywhere else, let me know. <laughs> wow. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, yeah. every place that you've talked about are fantasy places for most performers. Yeah. Carnegie yeah. Hall, the Vatican. Right. The steps of Buckingham Palace. I know. I'm blessed. I mean, I'm when blessed. you think about just the places where you traveled and performed, that that's just phenomenal. So you've had multiple chart successes, mm-hmm. eight mm-hmm. CDs, mm-hmm. four singles. Now, if you're going to create a greatest hits, how do you choose those? It's funny, Roy's um Roy's partner Mitch just asked me the same thing. Are we gonna have a greatest hits album from you? And I'm like, no, no, I'm I'm not ready to do a greatest hits, but but to to pick up like the Christmas album, they're all songs I love. Roy wrote uh five of them, and then five are Silver Bells or Mary Did You Know, uh Jingle Bells. I I pick my albums, n- not my originals, because those are the guys and whatever they give me. Uh, we just hope I like. And and Tammy, there have been times they've written a song that I didn't like. I said, I, this one's not working for me. Or fix this, that this isn't working for me. And then they'll nail it and give me something that I love. One of the songs meeting is Take the Day Off. It hit number 20 on the charts. People were whistling it. It was um, it was a it was a silly take the day off. We submitted it for Dr. Oz. 
um, when he did his series, Take the Day Off. Um, they, they, the inspiration I would say is, is, and the greatest hits would be, um, for my next album with Christmas is I have to love the songs. Tammy, if I don't love the songs, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. And all of my albums, I stand by every one of them. They're all, I love when someone comes up to me from my first album and says, I love when you did Fat Swaller, Honeysuckle Rose. And I'm like, I recorded that? <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, well, that would be a good song to record. You did it already. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, so how many albums have you done already? We've done eight albums, four singles, and I'm working on the ninth album comes out October 19th, which is called Beauty Along With The Bass, which is just me and bass. So I'm very excited about that. It just, it's the essence, no, no piano, no, no drums, a uh, couple of percussion here and there. And, um, and then the, my 10th album will be the Christmas album. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So how I'm, many years does that represent of you being a professional um, international jazz singer? Well, the thing is, when I was in Juilliard, Roy and I used to do um, shows throughout New York City. I didn't start recording till 2010. In 2010, I would say that's when my recording career. No, no, no. 2008. 2008 it was when I, I really started recording. But I've been performing since I was young. Um, I remember in the third grade, my teacher heard me humming the way we were, Barbara Streisand, and she asked me to sing it. And I did. And I've been singing ever since, since third grade for my high school students. I did a senior solo. I've been singing a long time. Wow. Yeah. I, it's funny the way you said you're in the third grade, the way we were, I think I must have been about 18 when uh, that came out. There you so go. I'm a little bit <laughs> older. So tell me more about uh -huh. the when you are creating these uh, different styles okay. with, to create uh, different, the different genres and how sure. you incorporate the elements into your music to create something very unique. Tell me more about how that happens. I think, um, I think that happened because my mother told me if I was going to be a singer, I have to create my own sound because I was starting to sound like Ella Fitzgerald. I was starting to sound like Sarah Vaughn. She goes, no, you have to sound like Donna Singer. So one of the shows Roy and I did, uh, uh, um, a newspaper man came up to me and he goes, you know, while you were singing, all I kept hearing was Amazing Grace. And I thought, oh, God, I blew it. <laughs> what do you mean you kept hearing Amazing Grace? He goes, you sing with a touch of gospel that I don't know if you know you do it. And I'm like, um, pack up all my cares and whoa, here I go singing low. And he goes, just most people was like, pack up all my cares and whoa. And you, you're, you're all over that song, but it's with a gospel flavor. And it stuck. He put it in a newspaper. He said, you have to go see Donna Singer's show. She is a jazz singer with a touch of gospel. And that, I think is how I approach blending my style with, even when Roy, when he writes the songs, he says to me, okay, now Donna, go Donna-size it. <laughs> I'm like, go Donna. <laughs> Donna-size it. Well, that makes Donna. sense. Yeah, go because... Donna-size it. Because, because I'm not going to sing, Mary had a little lamb, Mary had a little lamb. I'm going to Donna-size it. Yes. And it stuck. And that's why I think I I have a little, I offer a little more specialness because that's how I sing. So I do jazz with a touch of gospel, with a touch of Donna. And that's how I get my blend. Does that wow. make sense? Well, yeah. yeah, I was just listening to how good you made Mary have a little laugh <laughs> sound and, and how you made it something. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, you Donna sized it. And yeah. Made it into something more than yeah. what just the song us yeah know it as that that that's really uh, yeah. interesting about how you yeah. do that so you've been literally you're an international mm -hmm. jazz artist mm -hmm. so that means that you're navigating this global mm -hmm. music scene and 
how do you connect with all of these people from different places in the world, different cultures? Um, um, I have to tell you, Facebook and Instagram. When Facebook, when I opened up my page, I now have 4,000 people on my page. And in Instagram, I have about 5,000. When we got to South Africa, the first thing I did was find Facebook jazz vocalists in South Africa and started posting my songs. Of course, I had to first see that I was in South Africa and see which when you when you get a good publicist and mine is Carry On Productions, um, Carrie sends me where my music is played. That's how I know I am global. So when we were in Australia, Facebook, Instagram, Australia Jazz, and I started throwing my music on the on the um on Facebook there too. YouTube, we have about a thousand followers. Same thing. Each of my songs, you'll see, go to Facebook. I have 28 videos. I and I and I tag people that and then and we, we were supposed to go to Copenhagen three years ago and it got canceled because of COVID. And I have friends that were waiting for me to come because I found them on Facebook. So you you say, well, Donna, you're you have global music. You're right, but it didn't just happen. Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of those things. If you go to my page, you'll see that they they have things on them as of yesterday. Because I know to be global, I have to be out there. I have to be out there. I don't know, Dr. Tammy, how many times did you see a show that I would be performing in on Facebook? I, I post quite a few. I and post, I share them. <laughs> Oh, thanks. <laughs> and I post them. Um, so to get that global music scene, you you have to be ready for for um, social media, I think. Does that sound about right? And hopefully yeah, it, it, sounds, it sounds because if you look at people, uh, we are living in this global communication yes. field and yeah. you have to talk to touch your them. audience and yes, your audience touch them. is... Yeah, you know, wherever they're at, that, that they're going to be interested. So in all of your experiences, I'm sure you've worked with um, renowned jazz musicians. Can mm -hmm. you tell me about any special experiences or any mm -hmm. unique things that have happened in your adventures? I would say one of the most unique things while we were in Switzerland, in the Alps, there it was sold out. So they opened the windows so people could go on the mountain with their chairs and hear, hear us. So we were inside, but they opened the doors and they opened the windows because people were trying to get in and they couldn't. And I just thought, this is remarkable. Music transcends. It transcends. And then the next day, my um, bass player, Hunter Isbell, was his, his birthday. So we went up on the mountain, picked a whole bunch of salad and, and things like that. And everything you want, you could eat in this salad what came from that mountain. And all of a sudden I picked something up and I said to the producer, I said, oh, what's this? And she goes, oh, that's grass. Don't eat that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> Let's just say I didn't have any more of the salad. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> so, so for Hunter's birthday, he got to eat this great salad. <laughs> and for me, don't eat that. I picked the grass. Oh, well. <laughs> so of all the jazz musicians that you've ever played with, can you explain who you think was the most interesting or mm -hmm. the most talented or whatever the criteria sure, might be sure. in your own mind? I would say my two band directors, um, Melton Mustafa Jr. and um, Carlos Panera, the talent that these guys can get a big band together and just whip it up and support me 110%. Um, and they both play instruments. I, be I believe they both play sax. Um, but, but for me, they're band directors. It was just it was just an honor, an honor to stage to share the stage with them. It really is. I there Melton is in, I think, Boca Raton and Carlos is in, I think, Boca also. 
And so if I had to say working with any instruments, also my trio, Rancis Cologne on bass, who we did Beauty along with the bass album with. Um, he worked with Placido Domingo. He worked with Ricky Martin. Um, the fact that he's my bass player is just absolutely amazing. And then my piano player, who is um, Brad Keller. Um, Brad, uh, he was the pianist for the Manhattan Transfer. Um, it just... It just it blows my mind. I, I love that I work with these are my core. These are the people I keep close to me. And Aldafa Herrera has um three Grammys, um, Latin Grammys. He's he's a phenomenal drummer. We're like I said, at the end of in two weeks, we're all getting together to make magic again and make another um album. So if there's anybody, I, I wish I could say um um who, who Audrey McDonald is someone I've, I've never worked with her, but I would be honored to share the stage with Audrey McDonald and someone else that I also Forrest Whitaker. Um, he is a, a black actor that is just one of my favorite, um, favorite persons. So that's, that's who I'd give you. That's that. That's cool. So since jazz is known for improvision, imp- Proposition. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And spontaneity. So, how do you keep up the energy and the creativity flowing during your live performances? If there's oh. so much, imp- yeah. you know, you're right. you're right. Yeah, and and a lot of people because we just had a great performance the, in New York, and people were just like, "You haven't changed." I think what it is is I graduated from the prestigious New York Academy of Theatrical Arts. And a lot of people don't realize, I said theatrical, that's acting. I I love performing and acting. And I love telling the story with my songs. If I'm going to share a song with you, I'm going to tell a story. And and I think that keeps it fresh. It's not just, oh, I'm going to sing this song like, like you just said, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Find a way for another night to make it sound fresh and great. We also do um, Tina Turner's Proud Mary. And I'm like, as soon as I hear that beat, bum, 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 I'm, I'm on. I'm on because I'm channeling her and I'm go- about ready to have a great performance. Another thing I think to keep the roots, to keep the roots of jazz for me, um, um, I'm constantly, I know this may sound strange, but I listen to jazz. You, you know what I mean? I, I listen to rhythm and blues and I listen to 50s and bebop, but I listen to jazz. I'll put on an album by Ella Fitzgerald and enjoy it as if it's the first time I'm hearing it. You know how you play music in your house? Well, I, my music I play is jazz and um and gospel. And those are the things I like to play. B.B. and C.C. Winan of gospel fame. I, I play them and I sing their songs. So how do I keep it fresh for my stage? I keep it fresh because I'm still listening to it with that new ear. Like, oh, I really like that. I really like that. Oh, boy, I found a new song for us. And he's like, you did that already. Well, we're going to do it again. Only we're going to do it this way. <laughs> and it's going to be great. So for me, I, I keep I keep roots alive. I go back to my roots and I listen to jazz. So so you mentioned quite a few people um, mm-hmm. just now. Are there any other musicians, past or present, that have are really have significantly influenced you? Um, Mahalia Jackson. Um, I I can't listen to her without crying from the sixties, and I mean. I know, I know we this is like totally something you weren't expecting me to open this can of worms with, but Black Lives Matter. And I listened to her for major inspiration. And and we're doing Mary Did You Know in our next Christmas album. And it's half because I love the way she sang it. You know, I'm just like, if if there was one one person, um, then Barack Obama. Um, that would say those two influence me, touch me every time. In fact, on my Facebook wall is a picture of him. I just, I just, he touches me. He, because of them, I have a me. And I don't take that for granted. And because of me, my son has a a life now for him. So maybe you were expecting me to say newer artists, 
But Mahalia Jackson and Barack Obama are my mainstay and they're my inspiration. And I can't listen to an album without thinking of my mother and my father. And on Sunday morning, playing Mahalia Jackson, you know, it just. Doesn't Barack Obama play an instrument too? Oh, he does? Oh, no, I didn't know that. I I could swear that I saw I know Clinton played sax. But. (laughs) I, we'll look that up. We'll look that up. We'll, we'll put a I, I'm in. not sure. But no, I, I didn't really have any expectations on who mm-hmm. you might uh, talk about because like, you talked about so many different people. Yeah. And, yeah. And so I was just curious on um, if there was, you know, one or two people that really have stood yeah. out. So here's a question. Mm-hmm. It's about balance. And so, so there's the traditional roots of jazz, and then you also explore a lot of new sounds. So, yes. tell me a little bit about that balance of of mm-hmm. keeping the traditions, but also that exploration. Sure, sure. You know, it's funny you should mention that because I was just asked that same question, really close to that same question. I think the balance for me is I I have my goal ahead of time. We're going to do five on an album, five covers, which is um, a song that everybody knows, and five original. That's usually my balance. Four covers and four original. Now, for a show, I don't do very many originals. I don't. For a show, I stick with what I think the audience will like to hear. So I think now with um with with the Diamond Jazz Orchestra, we have done quite a few original songs that we put together. But for a trio or a quartet, and even I also sing with a hundred and a hundred piece um concert band called the um, Boynton Beach Gold Coast Concert Band. And I sing um, Great American Songbook. So I'm not saying know your audience, because maybe somebody in the audience would like to hear Take the Day Off. <laughs> Who knows? But I tend Put to... <laughs> yeah, really, <laughs> let's do it. But I tend to be a little more careful. So like um, this last show we did in Lake Worth, we did Prince, Purple Rain, then we did um, the Beatles, Blackbird. And when we did Blackbird, we segued into Bye Bye Blackbird. So it was just like Blackbird singing in the dead of night, take these vocal rings and learn to fly. So we did that. And then we went, pack up all your cares and woe. And then we went into that. So you say, so, so it was a little different. Yeah, I could have done both songs as songs, but I said, I think these two songs will go together. So Dr. Tammy, you want to know how it stays fresh? I stay on my toes. I'm a teacher. I'm always learning. I teach students. They're always learning. I shouldn't become stagnant and just teach, sing Proud Mary because Oh, we do it every show. No, we do it because people love it. And then we do when the saints go marching in because Louis Armstrong is behind me saying, go do that song. I'm going to do that song. Tina Turner saying, go do that song. I'm going to do that song. So you say, Donna, it's challenging to, 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 to get the pushing the boundaries and exploring new sounds. Yes, I have my new songs, but I respect the people who came before me and I will do their songs as well. It, it makes sense that that you're honoring what the the audience expectations yes. for different things, but at the same time, it opens the door so that you do have that opportunity. Yes, to, to play one or two songs. So yes. then, what else you have that's original? Just mm-hmm. you know, and then they can grow on, on, With on me. that. Yeah. But I do know audience have expectations, and if you don't give them what they want, then they're either bored or they don't want right. it. It's like, well, this isn't what I expected. Right, right. And and I also love when my audience goes, sing, sing Proud Mary. I'm like, we just did that. Sing it again. <laughs> okay. We had that this summer. Somebody came up and requested it twice. The same person. <laughs> it's like, okay. All right, what else? Sorry about that. The phone. No, that's okay. Started I'm right very away. excited. Very so, happy. To be- 
you've been out there, you go on tour, you, you um, COVID happened. So you've yes. had some uh, challenges that you uh, faced, but what about this current album or the mm-hmm. last album that you recorded? Have you run into any issues or any uh, challenges or, or what are some, maybe a fun behind the scenes story you might be able to share? About oh, no, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun. It's hard work. We, for beauty along with the bass, we were so intense, it almost fell apart right in front of us. And you want to know why? Because I didn't have my act together. I didn't. So, so, and, and I'm the first person to say, yep, it was me. So a fun fact, know your music. I'm sorry, if you're a vocalist and you're going in with a team of a trio that's 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 top notch like mine is or are, you better know your music. Sorry, that wasn't a fun fact, but it almost fell apart right then and there because because I didn't have my music. And let me tell you, that night, Roy and I were up to like midnight learning the music. Like here, you're singing this note wrong here. This segue goes like this. And I was like, oh, why did I think I could wing it? No, respect your audience, respect your musicians, know your music. That's really good advice. And you can apply that to Mm -hmm. a lot of other things in life too. I I appreciate that because a lot of times we do, we think we can just go in and wing it, (laughs) but (laughs) but you really can't. So thinking about that, obviously you show up with Mm -hmm. 110% of you. So what message or emotion do you hope to evoke to your listeners through your music? Um, The biggest thing is my message is always love. It's always hope and believe. Um, I, I don't, I don't sing on hatred. I don't sing out of anger or spite. I don't. I sing out of love. So if I have a message for my audience is that choose joy. If you if you have an opportunity to be angry, hurt, upset, happy, love, joy, pick joy. So I I have to admit even my um my chip jar says choose joy, Donna. <laughs> Just that's that's my message. Um love um, hope, believe. I think with this Christmas album, um, we're very excited because it. two of the songs are not fluff. Two of the songs have a really good world peace message that that I really hope people will say, what's wrong with us? Let's let's choose joy. Let's choose love. You know, Tammy, I I I I I don't pretend to write music. I I'm I do not have that that talent to write music, but I do know what I like to sing. And I think I know what my audience likes to hear. So okay. let's just choose joy. So if I have a message, it's choose joy. Choose joy. So yeah. Donna, mm-hmm. people find you find your music where Mm -hmm. should we go to look um i'm on all streaming platforms um if you've heard of spotify apple music youtube amazon music all of my music are on streamed if you go to um youtube you'll hear every single song i've ever recorded because now youtube very lovingly does a video of just the words so yeah, I didn't know that either. All of a sudden I, I poked down like honeysuckle rose and there it was. And I was like, I didn't make a video on honeysuckle rose and it's me singing honeysuckle rose. YouTube does that. So they do a very good job. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Donna Singer, Dr. Donna Singer 0710. And you could find me on Instagram, LinkedIn. And actually I'm really, I don't know that you're going to be like, oh, Donna, you didn't. Um, not Reddit. But um, what's the newest one out? TikTok. Uh, yes, I I did a TikTok. <laughs> hey, uh, t- TikTok is one of the most popular yeah. uh, ones, and it probably and a lot of people are using it. Up and coming artists. Uh, yes, 
I, I have found some great original artists um, with mm-hmm. on TikToks. On TikTok. And, you know, they'll play the music and you can, you know, if you like it, you can share it. You can, it's you crazy. Know. And I have, um, I put up, I think I put up 25 videos, 25 different, um, 10 different songs. And all I did was talk about something about each of the songs. Oh, I just have the music nice. playing in back of me. And I just said, oh, and this is where we perform with da 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 And you can hear us on da 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 Thank you. 15 seconds of fame. <laughs> and I think oh. I have over a thousand likes. <laughs> yeah. Well, a thousand can turn into. Amazing. You, you know, turn into three. You never know. Yeah. That's fabulous. So before I let you go, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I just want to say thank you to my family and to my son and my husband. Um, This really is a group effort. This is not just Donna going out there and conquering the world. It's really the three of us and my twin sister, Dawn, my older sister, Teresa, and her family. I mean, if if you ever want to know who came to all of my first shows, it was it was my family. And I I'm honored and thrilled that you you you're inviting me, Tammy. I'm really enjoying this, but I have to give credit to my family. Well, thank you. So everyone, we've been speaking with international jazz performer Donna Singer the perfect name I mean, yeah. you can't forget it it's Donna S I N G E R it's the perfect name so thank you so much i really appreciate it thank you you have a great night thanks for listening to business innovators radio to hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today